Good evening, from Jacques Deluche, your Director of Religious Education here at Divine Mercy Parish. I say good evening because today we would have gathered together as one Divine Mercy Parish family and community in the evening. Sadly, due to the situation with COVID-19, we have had to continue to gather for at-home learning, gather in this manner, and Ryan and I had to make the painful decision to have at-home learning for the rest of the year, family catechesis, um, instead of gathering in person. Today we are still in the Easter season. Um, Easter Sunday was last Sunday. Easter, the season itself, goes until Pentecost Sunday. So it's a longer season, a little bit longer than Lent, but it's a glorious season because we are celebrating the resurrected Jesus on earth. And we have to remember as we read the gospel accounts, and yes, there are different resurrection accounts in the gospels. Luke, of course, famously focuses on, if you read the gospel of Luke, the road to Emmaus with the two men who are actually not apostles. Um, they were disciples, but we are all disciples, followers, believers in Christ. They were just two disciples. They were not the apostles. And it showed us that Jesus appeared to everybody. And in St. John, of course, we have a few of the more famous accounts that we know about, one of which I will read today because it was the gospel reading for this past Sunday. The reason I highlight these accounts is because Jesus did not resurrect, go to the apostles, say, hello, I'm here, stay for a day, and then leave. No, he stayed with us for a period of time. He stayed with the apostles. He ministered to the apostles and also to his other disciples and even to Mary's mother, St. Mary Magdalene. He was with them. He walked with them. The apostles we consider are first priests in the Catholic Church. And in many ways, I like to think of um, Jesus' time that when he was resurrected, but before his ascension, his time with the apostles, as their final formation, their diaconate formation before becoming priests. Similar to what Deacon Luis is going through right now, he will become a priest in May. And similar to, for those of you who remember Deacon Pedro from a few years ago, before he was ordained a priest that late May, early June, he was going through his final year of, the, of his formation as a deacon. And that's what I think about the apostles' formation when they journeyed with the resurrected Jesus. We think about this time because though it may not seem glorious or joyful outside, we're still not able to see our loved ones. We may have fears about our jobs. We may have fears about our loved ones who are ill. There's a lot of uncertainty still. We're starting to see optimism, but with that, of course, comes apprehension. We still celebrate that Jesus is with us, that Jesus will provide, that God will provide for us. It takes faith, it takes a lot of faith, but through that, God will provide in his own way for us. And yes, at times it is tough, but God will provide for us. He will be here with us. He will journey. He is journeying with us as we speak. With that, I wanted to read the uh, gospel passage from this past Sunday. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The apostles rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did on many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is a Messiah, the Son of God, and through this belief you may have life in his name. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we just ask you that even in this time when we are doubting, there is a lot of doubt, Lord. Are we going to be able to go back to work, resume somewhat of our normal lives? Are we going to be able to see our loved ones? If we do begin to resume the businesses, is there going to be that second wave? Are more people going to get sick? Are more people going to tragically lose our lives? Are we going to be stuck in this endless cycle of doubt? Lord God, I ask you, Lord, that as you give us the comfort, as you offer us comfort, offer us strength, we may open our hearts, open our minds, Lord. We may stay positive. We may be cautious. We may be smart, Lord, that we may you know, accept your grace to be personally responsible, but at the same time, we may not fear, Lord. We may not be afraid. God, I, I know you are with us. Help us to see your face, to hear your call, to do your will. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for being with us. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for Jesus rising from the dead, and we thank you for his mercy. We thank you for his mercy. Lord God, we just ask you to be with us. We know you are. We have faith that you are. And we ask that we may again not doubt that any fears we have, Lord, that we may know, that we may believe, that we may have faith, that you will carry us through, that we will become stronger, we will become more compassionate, and that we may grow in our faith and that we may stay positive, that we may be optimistic, that we may have faith. We pray for all these, and as we pray for the families, for the volunteers here at Divine Mercy Parish, and in our catechesis program, we pray for any other intentions we have in our hearts. And now we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Praying for you all this week. I hope you all have a blessed day. Thank you again. Bye now.